This week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be discussing the new album by Lake Street Dive entitled Obviously. And Greta Van Fleet's The Battle at Gardens Gate. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Music Worth Buying. My name is TJR. I'm a musician and a music writer. And my name is Robert Kinsler, and I'm a music writer and a musician. And we're back. We've been away for a while, and this is our first episode in quite a while. And if you're new to this show, uh, this is a show that Robert and I have done where we each bring an album, a new release album that we're excited about, and discuss it and share it and share it with each other and share it with you. And hopefully, give you something new and exciting to listen to. We've got, uh, of course, uh, two albums we want to talk about today that we're both very excited about. You've got a very highly anticipated release, Robert. And of course, we're referring to the new Grid of Unfleet album. But before we talk about that album, I want to talk about the new album by Lake Street Dive. And it's entitled, Obviously. Lake Street Dive is what many would refer to as a musician's band. They are musicians' musicians. And they formed in 2004 at the New England Conservatory of Music in Boston, uh, combining jazz chops with pop music. But unlike, say, the more serious bebop, sardonic, dark sophistication of a band like, say, Steely Dan, which is known for combining you know, jazz with pop, Lake Street Dive's fusion of jazz and pop is much more spry and much more party driven. This is a band that wants you to party along with them. I first became aware of them and I positively reviewed their previous album from 2018 entitled For Yourself Up. The albums of course feature original songs, but this band is also really well known on YouTube for their amazing covers, live covers of classic rock, pop and soul songs. I'm gonna play a little track here before I do, I want to just mention this album was actually finished back in 2020, uh, before the lockdowns, but the band held off the release till last month in March 2021. And right off from the very first track, this album is absolute ear candy uh, from start to finish. And I say that in the best possible way. Usually when we hear the phrase ear candy, we think of very easily forgotten, but nice in the moment vapid pop music. Um, obviously is the kind of ear candy that immediately grabs you. And that's why I use that term, but it just keeps getting more textured with each listen. And so I'm going to play a little track here called Hush Money. It's track two. As always, we're hoping that you will get to hear at least a 20 to 25 second clip. Hopefully we don't get attacked by copyright gremlins and are forced to remove the clip, but you're going to hear it, Robert. We'll get your reaction and hopefully you out there watching will get to hear it too. Here we go. All right. You know, I just love that. I mean, this is my first listen, obviously. It's it's like I'm hearing soul in there. I'm hearing blues in there. But you know what's so undeniable is that great kind of that just that great rhythm and great uh with the drums and everything that comes in right away and it immediately, probably like you're saying, ear candy, it immediately draws you in. I definitely need to hear this album based on just that, you know, just on this track. Cool. And um, I want to just really quickly give a shout out to the band since uh, I'm sure there's probably a lot of people out there who may not be familiar with them. Uh, the band is Rachel Price on lead vocals, ukulele and guitar. Mike McDuck Olson on trumpet, guitar, piano, organ and vocals. Bridget Kearney on acoustic bass, electric bass, piano, vocals. Mike Calabrese, hopefully I've said that name right. If I didn't, I apologize. On drums, organ, and vocals. And hopefully I get this name right too. Aki Burmis on keyboard, organ, and vocals. And as you can tell, this is a band that is, you know, multifaceted. Each member is, is, is multi-instrumental, you know? Yeah. Uh, live, they all have their duties. You know, Rachel is up front with... Uh, with lead vocals, you know, uh, uh, Mike is primarily there on guitar, you know, but when they're recording, they're all multi-instrumentalists. 
And so it's, 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 you know, they're, they're very talented musicians. They're a musician's band, they're musicians, musicians, but they speak to, I think everybody with their music because there's such a good time feel yeah. to, their, uh, to their music. And they're so heavily influenced by pop music over the last, you know, uh, 40 decades, you know, uh, not 40 decades, four decades, excuse me, over the last 40 years, I should have said, um, <laughs> you know, I was debating what track to play. Oh, but let me talk about packaging first. I'm sorry. Let me do that first. So here is, of course, the cover. And I have to be careful how I hold this with the virtual backdrops because we start to lose. It starts to vanish if I do this. Hey, invisibility. I know. <laughs> Who would have thought? And, uh, and we have an insert here. Uh, which I'm sure this information is replicated in the CD version. We basically have a lyric sheet. Uh, lyrics are easy to read. The other side just has photos and some credits of the band uh, with uh, making the album. And of course, uh, this is just, uh, other than that, just a, uh, you know, uh, standard vinyl sleeve. Um, Annie, there, it is anti-static, which I appreciate. Um, my only complaint is no download card which you know, I think is always something that every band needs to include with their vinyl release. I will never stop saying that. Include a download card. Vinyl fans like to have a digital version for their mobile devices. And a quick tip, um, I don't wanna be shilling for Amazon, but I will say that nine times out of 10, if you buy a vinyl record on Amazon, uh, you're gonna get a complimentary MP3 download just in case you know, the vinyl record itself does not come with a download card. So I just thought I'd throw that out there too. I want to play you a second track here. And I was kind of like debating which one to do. There's uh, a track called Nobody Stopping You Now, which feels like one of those late 80s uplifting rock ballads that kind of fell out of fashion when grunge came along. Uh -huh. It's a genre I don't normally like, but I really was enjoying this, their spin on that. Um, there's also uh, a track called uh, Same Old News, which features uh, keyboardist A.K. Burmis uh, doing a vocal duet with Rachel Price, which is something I've not heard yet on the Lake Street Dive album as a vocal duet. There's also uh, a, a track called Making Do, which is a very 80s influenced song also that features some very Brian Mayes guitar harmonies from guitarist Mike McDuck Olson. And after carefully considering, I'm going to go with the third choice. I'm going to play you a little bit of a track called uh, Making Do. Here we go. You know, I really like that. And you know what comes to mind? You know, not that it's a total knockoff. It's a little bit of like the Amy Mann Till Tuesday thing going on. Oh, We're very okay. melodic. But, yeah. but uh, no, I... I my reaction is kind of like after the first track, there's an immediacy that you really warm up to this music and it, it uh, makes, makes me want to hear more. So that's a good thing. Cool. Cool. Glad you liked it. And so that's the new album, obviously, by Lake Street Dive. And now let's talk about what, uh, what you want to share with us, which is the new Greta Van Fleet album. Yeah. So I'm talking about uh, Greta Van Fleet's uh, very highly anticipated the battle at Gardens Gate. In the last months, the band has been releasing advanced tracks, usually accompanied by some pretty ambitious music videos to match. And, and anyone can go on, obviously, on YouTube and find those. But, um, you know, what, what I want to really start off by saying is, you know, there's this common, oft-repeated a refrain you hear that rock and roll is dead. This is a young band. All these members are in their early 20s. And boy, don't tell that to the members of Greta Van Fleet. Rock and roll is definitely not dead listening uh, to this album. Uh, you know, it's been produced by uh, Greg Kirsten, who I know is a familiar producer. I know he's worked with Foo Fighters and many others. He's a fantastic producer, and he's really brought out the best in this band in terms of, I think, their songwriting, uh, their performances and their ambition, which I think is exhibited across all of the 12 tracks on this album. Some of them are pretty, pretty marathon length. Um, and uh, why don't we do this? Let's, uh, and this is a song I know you mentioned you've had a chance to listen to it once. Maybe some of our uh, viewers out there haven't heard any of it. And this song is called Broken Bells. And let's listen to a little bit of that. And then we can uh, discuss that one. Sure. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, so first, I should say that we listened to quite a bit of that track. This album came out today as we're filming right. this. Right. So I only I got to hear the album today for the first time prior to us filming this morning. Right. You, of course, got to live with this album for about a week, roughly. For and about a week, the, exactly. I got an advance, an advance stream, the right. record label, which was which you know, because of the publications you write for, right? Uh, which is great because now you've had the album for a week, so you can you've lived with it and you can you can you can make a good knowledgeable review of it. I don't feel like you can really review an album after one listen. You have to hear it at least three times. But we tend to like to live with the albums that we're reviewing at least a week or longer on this show. Yeah. Which is something I think we should always point out. I would say that it's time for the Led Zeppelin comparisons to be dropped. They were not undeserved mm -hmm. during their initial first, you know, EP release. And they were not undeserved with their last album, although there right. were already no, signs that totally. they were leaving that behind. Right. But on this album, I've heard it once. You and I hope you agree with me on this. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm, you know we haven't talked, we haven't shared our yeah. thoughts on this yet. I have to be honest. When I'm listening to this album, the songs, and I want you to finish your thought, TJ. But the songs were so powerful, and you know, the, you stop thinking about Led Zeppelin, you know, mm -hmm. or the it. And I know what you're saying. The comparisons were there. And so you go into the experience going, oh, let's, but I'm telling you, give this album a try and this band a try. They, it is impressive what, what, you know, the, what you're hearing on this album is pretty in, incredible. It's one of the best albums of 2021 that I've heard so far by really. Okay. Sure. okay. Yeah. Because I've only heard it once and I'll admit it was a lot to absorb an awful yeah. lot to absorb because the songs are very expansive. They are, they are very epic. Most of the songs get close to six minutes in length, some of them yeah. longer. There's a few, there's one that's close to nine minutes. Yeah. There's a few that are under five minutes, but there's yeah. there are no like three and a half, four minute songs no. on this album. No, the, the band has something to say. And I think when I read some of the, um, and people can read about this online, I think I reposted one of the media releases, but this kind of reflected, you know, the band went from basically playing little, you know, little bars in Detroit, you know, they're from Michigan to playing, you know, like Coachella, these major festivals spanning the globe and that kind of thing. So here they are, these young men, they basically probably come from a small town. All of a sudden they're kind of world travelers and all their experiences and that rolls into the material. So not only is their musicianship obviously exploding in terms of how great they are there. And on this song, I mean, you know, you know, Josh, uh, and hopefully I'm going to pronounce his not name right. You can prep. It's Kishka, I think, right? Um, I think his right, last yeah. name. Yeah. I've had trouble with it. Yeah, he sounds fantastic. And then, uh, you know, and then the guitarist, Jake, who's his brother, his guitar solos kind of helped propel all the songs on this album. But boy, is his guitar work impressive. And and, and not only technically, but artfully. So, um, and this song, you know, just how it goes from this beautiful, beautiful introduction. And by the end, just just fiery and volcanic, you know, just, just erupting. You know, it's just amazing. It just brings chills listening to it. You know, I'm glad to hear you say this. I, like I said, only heard it once and it was a lot to absorb in one lesson. I thought, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm certainly not ready to talk about this song yet. I need at least a couple, I need at least like three or five more listens before I feel ready yeah. to talk about it. And I may do my own separate review after yeah. this. I may yet do that. We'll see. But yeah, it's just in its first listen, yeah. from the very first listen, I have to say there was definitely an intention to say, okay, let's put an end to these Led Zeppelin comparisons. You know, and they are just now in the same way that Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings were neo soul, mm -hmm. you know, their music felt like it was from a time period, but it was all new and original. It was, you know, with this album, they are just neo classic rock. Yeah. You know, they sound like a classic rock band. And I think especially um, the lead singer, um, uh, I think that there was a definite intention on his part to remove what I will describe as the Robert Plantisms from his voice, because yeah. he did have right. certain ways that he phrased that were very Robert Plantish. And the band did cover Led Zeppelin songs. Yeah, And I said this, uh, I made a video when, when their first double EP was released. They basically released two EPs and then there was like a compilation of those two EPs um, that was released. And I reviewed that. And, 
And I said, you know, it's just natural when you're this young that you emulate your heroes. You right. know? But here, while he still has a high pitched voice, he can't help that. Yeah. He's not sounding like Robert Plant. If he's sounding like anybody, it's Getty Lee of Rush, which he's been also compared to, yeah. though not as much. Yeah. He, but even then, he doesn't sound like Getty Lee either. No, I don't think so. I think he has a very great voice. And, and like you said, a oh, yeah. lot of the originality and personality shines through. You know, he's just, he's not doing an impression of, it's not like he's in a tribute band here doing an impression. I mean, this is his voice and, yeah. and he's utilizing it. In, in dynamic and forceful ways here that really resonate. At least they definitely resonate with me. You yeah. Know. The so. band's, his vocal ability, his chops, and the band's ability has never been in question with me. And this is why I've always fought against the haters, which they have, mm -hmm. who just, and I think the haters, I mean, it's fine if you don't like the band. That's, that's fine. No worries. Yeah. But what I never liked about the haters for this band is they somehow thought they were superior to the fans. Like, I can tell they sound like Led Zeppelin. That makes me superior to you. It's like, yeah, we know they sound like Led Zeppelin. We, we yeah. caught that. But yeah. these songs don't directly rip off any particular Led Zeppelin song. Their first two releases, and I'm talking about the double EP, the compilation EP, and the, the first album, uh, Anthem of the Peace of right. I thought that right. the songs that did sound like Led Zeppelin, because not all of them did, even then, um, sounded like, Led Zeppelin recordings that were lost, you know, uh -huh. archived in the and, and then pulled out, you know, of new original songs, you know, um, and, you know, which to me is fine. That's what I always said about Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. They sound like lost Motown recordings that never got released. They were recorded back right. in the 60s and never got released. That's what their songs, their Zeppelin S songs sounded like. But yeah, here it's it's like, OK, this is it. This is the turning point. And I always figured. At some point they would, and I didn't think it would come this soon, that they would reach a point where they say, okay, we're just going to continue to be this band that writes really good Zeppelin-esque sounding songs, you know, because that's what we do best. Or they're going to say, we are now evolving into our own sound now. And the influences are now falling into the background of the band. You know, they're falling into yeah. the background while our sound comes to the forefront. And yeah. and that's what I think is happening with this album after one listen. Yeah. Um, no, so and very, yeah. No. And you have a you have, um, you know, hit the nail on the head. You know, I know I said that earlier, but yeah, I think we both recognize that this is a young band. They're maturing. And this is where they make their first really fully original dramatic statement. And it's a great one. You know, um, yeah, I'm very impressed by it. And I, and I don't have the physical CD that was not provided. They just send me a link. It just but came out today. Yeah, it came out today. So I don't have that yet. Um, but I do plan on picking it up definitely. And, and uh, you know, I plan on listening to this album a lot in the coming months and probably years ahead. Very uh, impressive. You know, and, I have the CD on pre order. <laughs> it's arriving yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah, so you're ahead of me there, but at least uh, so you, we'll both sound like be getting to do a lot of listening to this album. And like I said, the Battle at Gardens Gate, very impressive. What I thought we'd do is, uh, um, and hopefully, like I said, we can play you know 20, 25 seconds or something. The the next song I wanted to perhaps uh, showcase is called Heat Above, and that's one of the advanced tracks. So maybe more people out there have heard this one, and let's listen to a little bit of that one and then talk about it. You got it. So, of course, I knew this one because it was an advanced release. Uh, there were three songs that were given an advanced release. And while we're still on the topic of the Zeppelin comparisons, only one of them, uh, the one entitled uh, My Way Soon, uh -huh. that was the only track uh, that I thought had a strong Zeppelin sound. And it's the only track on the whole album that I think has a bit of that Zeppelin comparison and and I think that comparison is diminished now in context with the rest of the album when you hear all these other songs. Right. Um, Heat Above was the third, if I'm not mistaken, it was the third advanced single. I think it and was. I responded positively to the first two advanced singles. But when I first heard Heat Above, I was a little on the fence about it. I was a little like, eh, I'm not so sure about this one. But as the track, as I've heard the track more waiting up, you know, while waiting for the release, um, I have to say, and now that I've heard it in context with the album, 
I have to say that I, I'm on board with this track now. Yeah. It's a really good, solid track. And sometimes it takes time for a track. It to does. Work. And, you know, what's interesting in, in this track, and I know people need to hear the whole thing, but, you know, it, it starts with that really cool, cool organ and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then there's those little touches where there's little breaks and you hear acoustic guitar. There's so many dynamics and so many little things that they do, you know, some of the modern day pop recordings you hear, it's like they, they plug it in and it's a one trick pony kind of approach where it just, it, it goes along. There's really, and if they do something to break it up, it's so in your face that it's, it's not nuanced. This yeah. is a band, like I said, they're so young. So they're the same generation as a lot of these, these pop purveyors, mm. but they're so far ahead of them art, artfully and creatively and stuff. I I'm just, so impressed by them and, and again i'm sure much of the credit goes to greg kirsten the producer but i'm sure a lot of it i'm sure the band had a big hand in all of this and just so we give credit to everybody the band is greta van fleet features the three brothers uh the, we didn't mention bassist uh sam kiska and then the drummer is danny uh wagner and um Again, a great young band, and, I, and I'm hopeful I can see them again, if not in 2021 and 2022. I really want to see um, how they deliver live. No, um, yeah, I, every, live, every live concert video I've ever seen has been really good. Um, there was that one SNL performance where something obviously went wrong, uh, which was kind of a shame. Yeah, that was that was an introduction for a lot of people. That was their introduction to the band. But right. there's so many great live performances of them on YouTube. Um, there, but I, but I think the best live performances are just the actual concert performances versus yeah. TV show live. When they when they performed at Coachella, um, they live streamed their performance the weekend I wasn't able to go, and uh, they were just uh, fantastic. Uh, they're very uh, powerful, and that's like I said, they've only gotten better since then, and the things that I've seen live. So, uh, but yeah, I hope everyone will check this out, and and uh, uh, like Going I said, with I, an open mind. You know, yeah. and and kind of leave the leads up and start leaving the lead comparis leads up and comparisons at the door. I know many people love them for that reason too, for the same reason that some people hated them. But I think the comparisons is time to stop, and I think they set out to prove that with this album. And I'm sure that, uh, like you said, producer Greg Christian, that that was part of that he that was part of his intent too. And uh, mm -hmm. and he produced the Foo Fighters latest album, which I also gave a real positive review to. Uh, when it when it came out right at the beginning of this year, I don't know if you heard that one or not. The Foo Fighters. Yeah, no, I I've heard some of the cuts off it, but I haven't heard the entire album yet. Yeah, definitely check that one out. He produced that, and um, well, great, great. Uh, I'm glad to hear your thoughts on this because, like I said, I only heard it once, and it was it's. I still feel like it was a lot to absorb, and I had like a lot of conflicting thoughts. Like, is this gonna album gonna fall under its own weight because of how huge and expansive so many of the tracks are? I wasn't sure. How it would hold up after repeated listens but uh you've already given me some very hopeful thoughts on it sometimes when you hear new music you know it's hard to to be on board with it right away it's like it like you mentioned it takes a while to get introduced but i found that it's so exciting and the musicianship and the songwriting so involving and stuff i'm like yeah i really want to want to enjoy this and every chance i've had a little downtime over this past week to to get some more time with the album i've been able to do that um, and, um, uh, yeah, I'm, it's I'm over an hour. The album's yeah. over an hour. It's over an hour, but it, it, it fly it, to my mind and my ears. It flew mm -hmm. by. Well, great. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thanks for sharing the Greta Von Fleet album and everybody. Um, hopefully, uh, this has intrigued you and hopefully you want to check out these albums. Let us know if you have, let us know if you've heard these albums, leave a comment. And, uh, you know, if you want to see us do more videos like this, where we, talk about new releases, recommend new releases, please share these videos on your social media. Please click like. When you click like, it, it helps more people discover these videos. Click like, click subscribe, and smash the bell notification icon so you can know when we release new videos. And I want to give a big shout out to the patron supporters who give that extra level of support. Uh, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash tjrtheoriginal uh, if you'd like to become a patron supporter. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll look forward to getting together with you again soon and discuss more new releases. Sounds good. Hey, good to see you, TJ. Good to see you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.